hello it's Pia here welcome once more to this channel another exciting um, episode today I'll be sharing on this video something powerful something I titled protect your seed yes you heard me protect your seed it's a teaching that's gonna bless you in no small way stay with me and I'll be right back Welcome back. I'm going to be sharing something from the book of Mark, chapter 4, from verse 26 to um, 29. The Bible says, And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. Right? He says, For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. He says, But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle, because the harvest is come. He says, What like, like in the earth, the, the kingdom? He says, It's like the earth. <clears throat> the earth causes seeds to bring forth without bias it doesn't matter whether you threw the seed into the earth intentionally or by mistake it doesn't matter your belief it doesn't matter the time of the day it doesn't matter the geographical location if you throw a seed into the ground the earth goes to work immediately on it and it brings forth first the blade then the air then the full corn in the air you know and and and, and this happens with or without your regard with or without your knowledge now I said we'll be sharing about uh, protect your seed why is that important now um, the Bible says so long as the earth remains there will be seed time and harvest notice the Bible never said harvest time but it did say seed time meaning there's a time to sow seeds there's a time in which you have to sow a seed or there's a time in which you are being watched for reward um, the prophet Elisha said to Gehazi he said did my spirit not go out with you and then he made a profound statement he said is it time to receive gifts meaning that that time Gehazi thought he's um, going to collect those gifts was just a matter of um, this pleasure to the prophet that if the prophet saw him would be angry so he did it in secret he did not know that that day heaven was auditioning heaven was watching him i give another example saul in the bible the bible says that after he had offered the sacrifice by himself when samuel came samuel said i wish you had not done that he said if you had not done this god would have established you as a king so he thought it was about a simple battle meanwhile that day he was being auditioned there are seasons the bible call seed time there are seasons where what you do has profound impact on the rest of your life believe this is so true it's in the word of god i just showed you two scriptures and if you pay attention to your life you find out it's true but that's not really my concern today is a seed time and harvest what does that mean that means that harvest time really depends on other factors there could be a fixed time to sow seeds but there's no fixed time for harvest because harvest is up to you that is true and today we'll be exploring why a lot of times we do sow seeds whether monetary seeds seeds of service seeds of honor seeds of obedience to principles and all those things that should provide a desired result which is the harvest now I want to explore why sometimes this does not come to pass why one person sows the seed and then reaps a reward in five years time another person sows the same seed and reaps a reward within 24 hours and yet another person sowed his seed many years ago and up till now those seeds have not come has have not come out from the earth now i title this protect your seed because i want to discuss what happens between seed time and harvest there's a long gap in between and i want to explore that season i want to explore the things that prevent 
the harvest the things that if you had known or if you do then you can guarantee your harvest because you see the word of god is sure i've studied the bible over years now and i found without um uh, I've not found a place in the Bible that hints or that suggests that God is not so convinced about his ways. God speaks of his ways with absolute audacity, with absolute conviction. God is not guessing. The scripture does not um, waver between possibilities. It is yes and yes. When God says a thing, he is sure of it. When God promises a thing, he guarantees it. When you find a principle in the word of God, it is guaranteed. So far as God is concerned, it is guaranteed. So if there's a question of God's willingness, then we have our answer. God is willing. God wants you blessed. God wants you favored. God wants you to win. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to have that promotion. God wants you to own that business. God wants you to have that wonderful family. God wants you to have that wonderful house. Whatever it is that God has laid in your heart, you don't have to doubt and say, okay, maybe God has changed his mind. No, God did not change his mind. Let me tell you something. If God put it on you, it's only because he put it in you. Did you get that? If God puts a responsibility in your hands and you feel it's overwhelming right now, believe me, if God put it on you, it's because he put it in you. God does not send a man without equipping him. God does not give a vision without sending provision. Sometimes you have to step out with the vision, but always the provision comes. If God put it on you, it's because he put it in in you now you have to find how god intends to walk with you and then walk with him never at any point does the calling on our lives become ascending it will forever be a calling god will always require you to seek after his heart what i mean is that there's no point in time that god would expect you to stop chasing after him to now turn and start pursuing the assignment the assignment is only fulfilled as you chase god the assignment is only fulfilled as you follow the calling so whatever is distracting you from your calling even if it is kingdom work that is a strategy to pull you away from God to disconnect you from God God never intended to send you without him God sends men yes but he sends men with an assignment and then goes with them so that is why you see Jesus gave the the, the great commission going to all the world preach the good news and then he says behold I'm with you always because that is his intention god never sends a man and leaves the man to go figure it out if god sent you if god called you then he's with you listen if god put it on you it's because he put it in you so let's explore between vision and manifestation between seed and harvest stay with me look at our text again in verse 27 it says after the man has cast his seed in the earth he says he sleeps and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he know it not how now this is amazing he know it not how it's gonna rise when you plant your seed you do not know all the chemistry the biological um, process that happens in the soil those science has given us a lot of insight into it but still we do not understand how it happens even the formation of a child in the womb we do not have full understanding we must admit that we don't all right so that although he does not know how the earth causes it to produce so you can find god's principles and obey them you can sow seeds faithfully and you do not necessarily have to know how the miracle is going to happen what the bible does promises us though is that it will happen so focus on it because it's going to happen how will it happen not important will it happen yes now, is there anything that we can do that will prevent it from happening? Yes. And that's what we'll be exploring. Is there things that we could also do by implication to accelerate the process of harvest or to ensure that the miracle comes on time? Yes. And that's the good news. So, but first of all, this verse 27, I just read to you, it says he does not know how. And it begins to tell us that the earth brings forth fruit of herself. The earth brings forth fruit of herself. Now remember, this is a parable about the kingdom. It says the kingdom is like that. 
that the kingdom will cause you to reap what you sow without you necessarily knowing how it's going to come. And that's why um, the, the, the Bible says God cannot be mocked. A man will reap what he sows. And most times when this scripture is quoted or made reference to, we tend to think of it in the negative that whatever a man does on you, it's only because he put it in you. Did you get that? If God puts a responsibility in your hands and you feel it's overwhelming right now, believe me, if God put it on you, it's because he put it in you. God does not send a man without equipping him. God does not give a vision without sending provision. Sometimes you have to step out with the vision, but always the provision comes. If God put it on you, it's because he put it in you. Now you have to find how God intends to walk with you and then walk with him. Never at any point does the calling on our lives become ascending. It will forever be a calling. God will always require you to seek after his heart. What I mean is that there's no point in time that God would expect you to stop chasing after him to now turn and start pursuing the assignment. The assignment is only fulfilled as you chase God. The assignment is only fulfilled as you follow the calling so whatever is distracting you from your calling even if it is kingdom work that is a strategy to pull you away from God to disconnect you from God God never intended to send you without him God sends men yes but he sends men with an assignment and then goes with them so that is why you see Jesus gave the the, the great commission go into all the world preach the good news and then he says behold I'm with you always because that is his intention god never sends a man and leaves the man to go figure it out if god sent you if god called you then he's with you listen if god put it on you it's because he put it in you so let's explore between vision and manifestation between seed and harvest stay with me sometimes it may not happen immediately but you have to work it out I learned years ago that miracles have to be worked out that miracles are real and they do happen but they have to be worked out uh, I was asking God why um, some prayers were answered and why something happened and he said you didn't work it out I said what do you mean and he started joining with me through scriptures and I began to see how that most times um, miracles are dependent on what I call look at our text again in verse 27 he says after the man has cast his seed in the earth he says he sleeps and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not how now this is amazing he knoweth not how it's gonna rise when you plant your seed you do not know all the chemistry the biological um, process that happens in the soil those science has given us a lot of insight into it but still we do not understand how it happens even the formation of a child in the womb we do not have full understanding we must admit that we don't all right so that although he does not know how the earth causes it to produce so you can find God's principles and obey them you can sow seeds faithfully and you do not necessarily have to know how the miracle is gonna happen what the Bible does promises us though is that it will happen so focus on it because it's gonna happen how will it happen not important will it happen yes now is there anything that we can do that will prevent it from happening yes and that's what we'll be exploring is there things that we could also do by implication to accelerate the process of harvest or to ensure that the miracle comes on time yes and that's the good news so but first of all this verse 27 I just read to you it says he does not know how and it begins to tell us that the earth brings forth fruit of herself the earth brings forth fruit of herself now remember this is a parable about the kingdom it says the kingdom is like that that the kingdom will cause you to reap what you sow without you necessarily knowing how it's going to come and that's why um, the, the, the Bible says God cannot be mocked a man will reap what he sows and most times when this scripture is quoted or made reference to we tend to think of it in the negative that whatever a man does the man that was standing sitting at beautiful gate he said silver and gold I have not but such as I have I give unto you. It says in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And guess what? The man stood up. No, the Bible didn't say he stood up. The Bible says that Peter grabbed him and lifted him up. So step one, he spoke. 
But there was no visible change. And then step two, he held the man and lifted him up. And guess what? The Bible says he was walking and limping, meaning his healing too was progressive. He didn't just stand up and start running. He was there, there was a limp. But I can assure you, eventually he was fully restored. And this happens again and again. The number one reason why we don't see the promised harvest, the promised result, is because we quit along the way. We stop following instructions along the way. We did step one and then we quit. We did step two, one, two, and then we gave up. And then that is why we did not receive the full result. We says, first of all, when the earth causes it to bring forth, it says first the blade, then the ear. After that, the full corn in the ear. Now verse 29 says, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come. Harvest time is not fixed to time. It's fixed to when fruit comes. So till there's manifestation, don't stop praying. Till the answer comes, don't stop listening. Till the desired result comes, don't stop obeying. Maintain that posture. Follow that posture. Walk it out. Walk it out. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Walk it out. It's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. You're going to enjoy that blessing. That destiny is coming. You are sent for this generation. You are sent for such a time as this. Walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. I think it's a powerful statement. Walk it out. It's going to happen because God sent said so don't lose your faith protect your seed right i've been blessed already I'm, I'm i'm sure you have been blessed already protect your seed now when the, the next thing that tends to happen that makes us miss out on this seed so uh, that period between seed time and harvest is that most times there's a trying period the bible says a seed bites alone but if it falls to the earth and dies, now that dying process, that process of death, that process that reads a man of flesh, that reads the man of an outer covering, that is the flesh, to expose the inner man of the heart, that is the fruit of the spirit, to expose the character of Christ. That trying is uh, one of the bends in which we tend to miss out on God. One of the points in which um, we believers tend to miss out and then seeds, uh, prophetic words that were received, seeds sown, now tend to not come to pass. Now let's explore this concept of trial. Now another word for trial is the word temptation and this is what is used in Second Corinthians, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. Now listen to what the Bible says. It says, there had no temptation taken you but such as is common to man meaning that everything you go through is common to men it is not peculiar to your situation although it may be special in a way true but it is not peculiar to you it, it's something that happens or has happened to men the bible says also that there is nothing new under the sun and that is true it says um, but god is faithful Listen, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able. Did you see that? But you'll be like, oh, pastor, um, the things that I'm going through really feels bigger than me. It's overwhelming. I can't stand it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Uh, if, if this continues one more, I'm going to quit. I'm going to give up. And, and you know, a lot of people have given up. And, and it, 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 the question becomes, was the situation then not bigger than them? Think about that. It's not because the Bible says that no temptation comes your way except you are able. God does not permit it to come your way because the intention is not to see if you will fall. The intention is that you come out with the fruits of the Spirit being manifest. Is that you come out with the character of Christ being forged in you you know the bible says the word of god like silver is tried seven times in the furnace of the earth and and the bible also speaks of joseph that until his word came the word of the lord tried him and that's what's also happened in your life that until that word manifests that word is going to keep trying it's going to keep making you it's going to keep pruning you till you become um able to host the dimension the miracle the the, the grace that god has promised you okay the blessings that god has promised you he says that um he says god is faithful who will not 
so far to be tempted above that which you are able to bear. Then it says, but will, look at this, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you are able to bear. Now, this is amazing. When we talk of the way of escape, you begin to think of Joseph and, and how when he was tempted by Potiphar's wife, left his clothes and ran out. And, and the way of escape was that door there. Well, true and, and not entirely true. And, and this is what I, I found and I want you to draw your attention to. It says, with every temptation, he provides a way of escape. Hmm. Now, you think that when he says he provides a way of escape, the next thing should be so that you can be able to run away. <laughs> but no, he says he provides a way of escape so that you are able to bear. That tells you something about the kind of escape that God brings. Because in your situation, you're looking for that way of escape and it's not there. Because you're expecting that the way of escape is what should change your situation, not necessarily. Sometimes the way of escape will change your situation immediately, true. But some other times, the way of escape only makes you able to bear that situation. And if you look at it, you'll see that God is faithful. That with every situation you've ever found yourself in, there was a way of escape. There was something that God kept that became a, a reminder to you that God is faithful except you aren't paying attention to the signs first of all God asked the devil he said you can touch Job's properties his children and all but don't touch his body you see that body was his way of escape his wife too was spared was a way of escape so that he's able to bear and then his friends too came to him later on God Tell the devil, okay, you can touch his body, but don't touch his life. And, and Job found out that in the midst of it all, he waited for death, and death was not close. And he began to see the workings of God. He says, no, I know my Redeemer liveth, and I know he will stand upon the earth. I know I will stand before him, and I'll be acquitted of all these accusations. You see, there was a way of escape. When you look at your situation, you find out that in intense moments, God gave you something. God left something. That something there was your way of escape. Sometimes God brings you into new relationships, new cycles. Um, things could be crumbling in your life. Maybe you're going through a divorce or certain pain, certain um, things are falling apart. But there's something that God keeps that just doesn't fall. That thing becomes your way of escape. That thing becomes a reminder with you that God is with you. And, and you know, um, the, for, for some of you out there in certain seasons of intense difficulties, the anointing was always there. The manifest presence, the Shekinah of God was always there with you and that is what made it possible for you to bear some of you it was just a song and that song became your way of escape for some of you it could be really anything i want you to look at your life find that door of escape that god has provided and i want you to go to that door i want you to engage that door i want you to 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 stand in that place and draw strength draw strength from there and then when and and and, and then uh, draw strength from there and then come back with a force again come back with a force because that temptation is not bigger than you the thing you're going through is not bigger than you remember what i said in the beginning if god put it on you it's because he put it in you there's a cup inside of you that is able to bear the pressure if there's so much pressure on you it's because there's something inside you that can actually go through that and come out purer and come out brighter and come out better than it was okay so find that door of escape and then engage if it's a person connect with that person for David it was Jonathan in, in with all the difficulties in Saul's house David found comfort in Jonathan for Moses God gave him Aaron Aaron was his way of escape and in, in growing up Pharaoh's daughter that took him in was his way of escape with every temptation God provides a door of escape and remember that the door is so that you are able to bear why because that temptation is not bigger than you you are actually bigger than remember the Bible says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world greater is what is in you than the pressures that are coming on you don't allow the difficulties of life make you believe that you've come to your to, to, to your end that god has failed or that faith has failed no believe god and rise above those situations all right so uh protect your seed so how do you do that how do you do that how do you protect your seed well number one most important thing is you protect your faith 
protect your faith. When you sow seed, protect your faith. It's important that you stay in the place of faith because when you do doubt, you run the risk of losing your blessing. Remember that Peter was walking on water till doubt crept in and Peter began to sink. So when you have sowed your seed, do what you can to keep your faith motivated. Meditate on the scriptures. Stay with the word and, and, and keep believing. Keep being excited. Have an excitement that expectation of what you are believing God for. It's important. Jesus said, how be it when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? It's important because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And if we hold on in faith, if we don't doubt, the Bible says we shall receive a reward. And this is true. Number two, how do you protect your seed? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It is important to maintain a posture of thanksgiving. Why? Because you see, thanksgiving also releases your faith. It also engages your faith in a special way. In that you start thanking God for things not seen. You're engaging in faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Substance of things hoped for. Now, you see, when you begin to give God Thanks, you begin to engage the supernatural because God moves from the end to the beginning. He's Alpha Omega. He walks from the end to the beginning. And so when you begin to give thanks, you begin to behave like God. You are thanking Him for things that have not yet come. You are acting like God. You are acting because you see, you are created in His image. You are created in His likeness. So when you begin to thank God for things that have not come, you are protecting your faith and you are doing what is expected. You are behaving like a child child of God. You're behaving like a believer. Number three is you have to avoid compromise. I think I've kind of spoken about that. But then compromise is usually the first um, level of attack the devil brings before opposition. I, I tend to say that. I say that whenever a man steps out to carry out God's purposes, the first level of attack is compromise. The devil tries to tell you something like, if you're the son of God, turn this stone into bread. That's compromise. That's abuse of power. That's abuse of, of, of systems, of what is ordained. You see, the devil comes that way because he knows that when you do that, you push your harvest to the future. And if you refuse to compromise and you maintain God's ways, you see, God is just and would ensure that you um, reap your harvest speedily. All right. And then number four is uh, offense. Offense. The Bible says if you're offering your gifts at the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, it says leave your gifts there in front of the altar. First go reconcile with your brother, then come offer your gift. Okay, it's important that even in seed sowing, before and after, while you wait for harvest, that you avoid offense. Jesus said, blessed is he that is not offended on account of me. It's very important that you leave a clear mind because the Bible says, how can you say you love God and then hate your brother? So every time you hate a fellow human being, you detach yourself from your supply. You detach yourself from the supernatural. And by so doing, you push your harvest to a latter date. These are some of the things that we do that prevents us from receiving our desired harvest. So protect your seed. Learn to protect your seed. Realize that when the devil comes to attack, he doesn't come to attack you just like that. He's after the word. He's trying to steal the word from you. Don't let him. Protect the prophecies you've received. Pro protect the, 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 the dreams that God has given you. Protect the visions. Anything that tries to touch you. Fight it with all you've got because it's going to come. No matter how long that vision takes, wait for it. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. I have this on good authority that the visions that God has given you will speak at their appointed time. You just have to be right there when it speaks so that it manifests properly. All right. So protect your seed, protect your vision, protect your prophecies, protect your investments in God. You love God passionately. You're in church weekly. Every, every, every meeting you're there, you serve in church. You believe in your man of God. You believe in the church where God has planted you. Protect your service. Protect your seed. Don't use your words against yourself. Don't speak against 
the anointing. Don't speak against the anointed. Don't turn and, and, and begin to curse the very fountain in which you sowed. You see, it doesn't work like that. If you remove the seed you've planted, you cannot expect a harvest. And we do that with our words. Our words carry life. The words that we speak, they carry life. The power of life and death lies in the tongue. So intentionally begin to send in good seeds to your future. Begin to speak good things into your life and then protect it and watch and see how your harvest comes speedily right on time. I love you beloved. Thank you for staying with me on this video. I hope it blessed you. Remember to like this video and share it with your friends. Also subscribe to our channel if you've not done that. And if you've not given your life to Christ, please repeat this prayer after me or in your own words and you'd receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for me. I, I, I receive faith again to believe. I, I, I left because I felt you failed me, but now I understand that I did not engage the principles to the end. Give me grace to follow through. Give me grace to follow through and I know that I'm born again. I know that I will see your manifestations in my life you're out there you've given up on your visions i speak life into those visions right now let those visions receive life receive strength for the journey ahead receive strength for the journey ahead in the name of the lord jesus have an awesome week keep winning keep dreaming keep visioning and watch and see as god brings the provision your way i know you have a testimony i know that you will succeed thank you very much have an awesome awesome week thank you